Dark Horse Candidates, Big 12. Justin, I want to I want to preface this conversation by saying when Joe Lenardi tells me that BYU will likely play Grand Canyon in round one and San Diego State in round two, I'm already thinking, that sucks. <laughs> that just sucks. Whoever gets that draw, that's a really tough way to do this. But you know, barring just an absurdity when it comes to the way that these teams are placed in the bracket, who in the Big 12 can make a deep run that we might not be talking about enough? That's that's an interesting question. I mean, I think there's so many teams that are going to be on this what this four line coming out of the Big Twelve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's it looking. Which, looking if you will, I I, I, was, I hate to cut you off there, but I do yeah. want. I love that you mentioned that because even in the top ten nationally, I say that analytically from a Ken Palm shot quality standpoint, it's like the first eight teams in the country. Houston's the only Big Twelve team, but from eight to twenty five or ten to twenty five. Big yeah. 12. Like it's like the, the conference dominates that zone. So you're right. There are going to be a lot right there in that same seeding spot. Yeah. The three, the two, three seed. I mean, looking at bracketmatrix.com right now, you know, essentially the, uh, the guiding light for me, love Joe Lenardi, of course, another, another guy who does uh, enjoy some SQ from time to time. Uh, big fan. But yeah, look, I, I think that it's going to be a little bit more like that three, right? Iowa State, Baylor, yeah. Kansas, kind of hard to separate in terms of where the best bracketologists are putting them. Houston going to take that one, uh, you know. So you're talking about a dark horse. It's it's this is a tough conference to talk about a dark horse. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, you got to you got to kind of go down a little bit. Uh, to me, it's tough. It's tough. I don't really know how I feel about a team like TCU or in Oklahoma, you know, facing a, a pretty, a pretty tough seven at, at yeah. some point. Um, it's, it's going to be difficult. They could end up going against a Boise state, a Texas tech, even you get a big 12 matchup in the second round. Like that's, that's the type of thing that we're heading towards for sure. Um, Florida, St. Mary's, I don't know. I think all of those teams in like that second tier of, of the schools getting in. So, you know, maybe just past BYU who's probably going to be like a f- four or five, six, Talk about those teams in like the seven, eight, nine range. I, I do think you could look to an OU, to a TCU, uh, and maybe even a Texas Tech, who has probably who's probably going to get the highest seed out of all of those teams there um, yeah. to maybe make a little bit of a run. TCU, Oklahoma, they're going to have to you know go up against some pretty decent teams here, right? So they're going to face that eight team. It's going to be tough. You might have a a matchup like a what a TCU, Nevada, a Colorado yeah. State. Oklahoma, it's <laughs> Gonzaga versus TCU. It's it's yeah. all really matchup based. It's such a, a difficult thing to say in terms of oh who's going to make a run. I literally need to know what those potential matchups are to start really getting a sense of where that dark horse value starts to lie. But in terms of what I've seen in in the performances, maybe what the shot quality numbers are seeing out of those teams, they're going to lean towards uh, Texas Tech who's definitely been a little bit lucky performing well this season, maybe overperforming. And we get to this point of the year, Drake, and it's an interesting question. Like when does shot quality is like indication of a team has been getting lucky all season start yeah. to just become, okay, maybe this team outperforms their shot quality by a little bit. Maybe they have mm-hmm. some really great shooters, you know, shot quality can have that type of like indicator, like Kevin Durant. We are, we're just, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to say that Kevin Durant just isn't one of the greatest shooters in the world and can outperform expectations that are tied to any type of league or personal average? Like he yep. can just continue to surpass. And, you know, Big 12, we love we like Kevin Durant around here is a good example. But that's the type of thing where, you know, Texas Tech might just be pretty good at getting the looks they're good at and and might out continue to outperform. So even if their efficiency metrics have a little bit of luck, Ken Palm has luck too, you know, not just shot quality. Yeah. There's, there's those, that unquantifiable difference between what's the efficiency expects and what is actually going on. And Ken Palm is smart enough to call that luck himself. Love uh, the godfather of college analytics, big shout out, I'm trying to get him on uh, a show yeah. sometime soon. Oh, uh, but rocked. no, I love him. Love the guy. Uh, really smart. And you know, a fellow curler. So uh, no, <laughs> I think, look, this is, this is a time of the year where you want to take that swing. Even if a team maybe feels like should, they should at some point drop off, maybe that production continues when you're playing these games. It's not about actually cutting down the net. It's getting yourself in the positions to, you know, maybe it's just bragging rights. Yeah. I called yeah. TCU getting to uh, the sweet 16 this year, or maybe you're placing a couple wagers and you want to get yourself a good position. 
I think it's all about, you know, taking some of these risks on a team like that who can win some big games, who has the tenacity to go on the road and compete. Being up at BYU is definitely no small feat. And, you know, I saw that one from a mile and a half away. You have one of the fastest offenses, like itching to run in transition, going up to Provo in the altitude. Like, come on, they fell off in the second half. They were gassed. So, but that type of energy, I do think can take them a long way. So, yeah, uh, if you want my short answer, my three-letter answer, it's, uh, it's TCU is a dark horse. I like it. Uh, Justin, I know we've kept you over time, but I want to keep you one question longer here. When you think about a TCU, if they land in that eight or nine spot, they get a Nevada yep. round one and they find a way to win, who do they want to draw? If you're an eight seed in the Big 12, who is the one seed that you feel like can be toppled in the round of 32? Oh, man. Um, oh, man. I, I, look, I think I think we do have a little bit of the Purdue uh, revenge narrative. Of course, yeah. everybody over there jumping for joy, watching fairly Dickinson's season end on Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah. But uh, look, I, again, they might they could have the same type of problem. Maybe it's a small school out of Syracuse in Lemoyne who looked good and, and took out after you. I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, mm-hmm. I, who's the most beatable? Ah, the, the top is so sound. I, I do think, you know, you probably have to go more towards uh, the coaching and, and how, who might stumble there. And, and, you know, I think it's, uh, it's Rick Barnes. It's Tennessee in terms of being a projected one seed right now. I don't think Arizona is going to get the one line. I do think it's going to be Tennessee. And if that's the case, that's a lot of pressure for that program. I love what Dalton Connect is doing. He is a superstar. He's going to be so much fun for people to get a taste of him in the national stage that maybe didn't watch college basketball until after the Super Bowl, or maybe you're just finding out about him now. We've been watching him since the no-co days, man. This is uh, going to be a great year, but, you know, t- four really tough choices. So I'm not saying Tennessee's going to stumble. Yeah. Of course, they did last season. Uh, they, you know, they couldn't hit anything against FAU, and that kind of fueled a big story that we still – feel the ripples of in the perception of college basketball teams today, right? Like FAU is still given a lot of credit for some of the incredible luck that they experienced in that run. I mean, Memphis, come on. Like that was, uh, you know, what Kendrick Davis probably still having nightmares about, you know, the, the timeout that wasn't given. And then they go and they get lucky variants. Now all of a sudden it's the craziest final four by ranking, uh, by seeding we've ever seen. And everyone's yeah. talking about them being a top 10, top five team. No, they're a top 40, top 30 team at best. And uh, yeah, you just got to trust that, you know, there's going to be hot streaks. It happens. You need to get hot to win a championship, to go to the final four. You need everything to line up. Your opponents can't get hot. You need to hit tough shots. You need your shot quality to be good. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be tough. It's a, it's a good couple of one seeds, but if you made me spin the wheel and, and yeah. stop it, Purdue, UConn, and Houston, I, I definitely don't feel have that uh, fall over and topple type of performance. Tennessee could do themselves in there. Could, they could run into a wall. Uh, they could just sort of uh, miss some shots and, and get out of sync, especially to a, a tough eight or nine seed, like a, a TCU, like a, you know, Oklahoma. I don't know about like some of the other teams out of the SEC or the Big Ten in that range, yeah. which are, you know, similarly rated like a Northwestern or Miss State. I think <laughs> it's so funny putting those four teams together and comparing uh, OU, TCU, Northwestern, Mississippi State as a comparison of some of the three biggest conferences. Uh, oh. I think you know why we're locked in on the Big 12 here. They, uh, they again, I'm, I'm the right guy to have on the show. I'm such a Big 12 proponent. I would not be shocked if they have, you know, five of the sweet 16 this year. That's it. Simon Gersberg just has a little bit too much of a Yankee leaning. We had to leave him on the cutting room <laughs> floor for this one and bring you in. Uh, Justin, I, you, you gave me chills there just because that that's Let's what go. March is. This is March. You know, like that. What you just summed up can be summed up. And you mentioned the three letters TCU. This is March. And uh, I, famous last words of the one seed is so strong. They're so well put together. They're so even. And then it just oh, you never man. really know who comes about to end that. And I love that we're going to get to experience that uh, this month and the next few weeks. Justin, if folks like the stuff that you're if they like this show they want to see more of the stuff you're putting out where do they got to go yeah for sure so we're doing a lot of cool stuff over with shot quality really focusing on some of this in-game data that we've been building out our brand new product focuses on live data we have a new show you were just talking about the biggest episode ever on tuesday trying to follow it up today on thursday we do 7 45 p.m come check it out it's called 
live betcast. And then, you know, just started my own show. We'll have to have you on, Drake. It's called the Justin Perry Show. A little a little uh, self-indulgent, but it's actually a group-style panel show. I just bring on great names in college basketball, sit back, and let them make me look good. So uh, kind of ironic. So really enjoying it. It's going to be a great month of content. There's so much great college basketball. Uh, you know, I hate to be cliche, but there's there's no time to rest. There's no time to sleep. Uh, we're going hard. Selection Sunday, what, 10 days away? It's uh, yeah, music we're getting to my close. ears. Oh, uh, we're getting close. That's Justin Perry from Shot Quality. Drake Toll from the Surface of the Sun. Thanks for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. Come back tomorrow. We will talk a lot more expansion across football and basketball. And it's March. This has been Lois Will Be. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Locked On Dose Grande.